It's that time of year when a lot of us are photographing holiday cookies, myself included, and I wanted to share with you today some of the tips and strategies I've picked up over the years as it relates to decorating those cookies so that they can look Pinterest worthy. But then also some ideas on how to shoot those cookies because, you know, I think we all sit in front of our cookies and think, how am I gonna photograph these other than just sort of that predictable top-down shot on a parchment paper and call it a day? Well, I've got some ideas and tricks up my sleeves. I'm excited to share with you today. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. Like I mentioned today, it is all about the cookies. We're going to dive into styling them, photographing them, take you behind the scenes here in the studio with me shooting some cookies. But before we get there, I'm excited to share with you that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, developing existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Now, I get messages all the time asking for help with things like, how do I get started in Photoshop? Or how do you edit videos in Premiere? Or things like, I like food photography, but I also want to learn to shoot portraits. Well, Skillshare has tons of quality classes just for you. One of my favorites is the DIY product photography with Daniel and Rachel of Mango Street. Now their lessons include everything from planning the shoot to styling and lighting, tons of demos. It's not just a head talking to a screen. And I love that it's applicable for both DSLR and phone shooters alike. So whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similar similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first thousand people to use the link in my description box below get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And then after that, it's only about $10 a month. I was personally just on there learning about Adobe After Effects and I can't recommend Skillshare enough. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get onto the cookies. All right, so I just counted and looks like we have 10 tips. So it's perfect. I love a good top 10 list to get in the holiday spirit. Today, I am gonna be decorating and styling and photographing my family's favorite sugar cookie recipe with royal icing. This recipe my mom has been making ever since I was a little kid, but I also now as an adult and being a food photographer and stylist, absolutely love this recipe because it's pretty foolproof and works great for food styling, food photography, because in terms of the cookie recipe, just the ingredients that make it up, that these are not as apt to spread so if you've ever made sugar cookies before and you cut them out and you're like, these are gonna be so cute. And then you bake them and they go, you know, like they just spread all over the place. And then you end up with these like sad formless reindeer or whatever you're <laughs> using in your cookie cutters. That's not gonna happen with this recipe, which is why I love it. And in terms of that icing, it's a royal icing that gets hard. So it's really nice from the perspective that we can do all of our piping, we can do all of that decorating. And then after they've dried, we don't have to worry, you know, we can stack them. Them, we can touch them, move them around the scene, and we don't have to worry that we're gonna mess up all of that beautiful work we did in decorating them. So again, both of those recipes are linked below. Personal family favorite from our house to yours. Now, one of the specialty tools that I am using to decorate these cookies, and to me is like what takes cookie decorating up a notch, is using piping bags and piping tips. And the set that I use is from Wilton. I, you know, I grew up using Wilton brand, those of you who grow up here in the US probably also know Wilton. There's other brands as well out there. I'll link the set that I have down below. But if you've never worked with piping bags or want to know how to assemble them, how, how does all the mechanics of this work, I'll link a video down below for you that's a good sort of get you started primer. But with all that said, all that out of the way, let's jump in. Tip number one. This is one we learned many years ago. Again, a sage advice from my mother is to use gel food coloring specifically when it comes to the red. This is very relevant for Christmas when we're going for the red and green colors. You know, sometimes if you use lesser quality or you use like liquid food coloring, that it can make the frosting more pink as opposed to a true red, which pink is fine, but if you really want like that red and green,
green. Highly, highly recommend going with gel food colors. The other advantage of using a gel food color as opposed to a liquid food color is because it's not going to change the consistency of your icing, right? Because when it comes to piping out that frosting, it's very much about the consistency, right? We want something that's firm enough to hold its shape so that when we squeeze that out of the piping bag that it holds its form, but it's smooth enough that it comes out easily. So we don't want it too liquidy, we don't want it too firm, and so once you've really dialed that in when you're combining the egg whites, the cream of tartar, and the powdered sugar, that you wanna make sure to really maintain that consistency, and so you don't wanna mess it all up by changing the liquids by adding more liquid food coloring. So again, gel food coloring, gonna change your life and it's gonna give you those vibrant colors. Tip number two is that again, if you're using those piping bags and especially the tips, especially the star tips, the tips that have a lot of details, you can see like this green tip here where I'm applying that star shape. What you're gonna to wanna to make sure to have is some sort of towel, maybe a paper towel or regular towel that's just a little bit wet and damp so that we can rinse off and kind of wipe off that tip and clear it away. And then just do a little test squeeze before we apply it to the cookie because what happens Again, because this icing hardens, which is great, right? Because it makes it so much easier to work with these once we've got them in our scene, but it will start to get a little crusty around the top of our tip. So just make sure to keep that clean so that you've got really nice, clean designs throughout the cookie decorating. So then tip number three is all about the selection of the cookie cutters that you're using. And when it comes to food photography, there's definitely the theme that we like similarity and continuity, things to feel connected, but in Enough variety to make it interesting. So one of the ways that I do that when it comes to holiday cookies is in having cookie cutters that are similar but different. So for example, a large snowflake and a small snowflake or a large star and a small star that you can see sort of that big and little creates just enough visual variety to make things exciting. Tip number four has to do with how do we create the designs that go on these cookies, right? Like we've got our frosting, it's colored, we've got our cookies ready to go, everything is looking great but now you're like what do I like what do I actually put on the cookie like how do I design it well for sure there's tons of great visual references out there you know like for these snowflakes I just was looking for some different ideas maybe how to change up the snowflake game and so I created a Pinterest board with some great inspiration if you want to go check that out I've got a link down below otherwise for me the majority of my cookies are just kind of going on different patterns creating patterns specifically with dots and and lines. I know that sounds so simple and it is, but as you start to just sort of deconstruct these cookies and you start to see it's just lines and dots. That's really all it is that those two things in combination with each other can look really visually appealing. And two, what's fun is that we have different cookies. And so it's as much about like the global impact of all of the cookies together as it is about the individual cookies. So sometimes keeping things simple with just like a simple line pattern can look really nice in contrast with other designs on your other cookies. On those same lines, tip number five, looking at the different cookies that you have. So for example, for me, I went with a theme of stars and snowflakes and the Christmas trees. And so then in terms of like the different Christmas trees, I just went with different variations of different patterns, but then also different colors because there's the continuity of the trees are all very similar, right? Like that's the thread that keeps them all connected visually, but then changing out the colors, using different tips, using different patterns that makes it different and unique. So just kind of looking for those opportunities to take cookies that are similar, but then just making little variations to make them different. But then also kind of in that same spirit, the idea that we have different shapes of cookies like a star and a snowflake and a Christmas tree that all have the same color and design. So again, how can we create these cookies? You know, because think about too, the idea of if we put all of these cookies together in one big shot, will they look connected and cohesive while still being interesting and different enough to create that visual variety. So the next set of tips, six to 10, are all having more to do with how are we gonna photograph these cookies? Because, you know, I was thinking about it and just looking through different cookie images, and there's a lot of cookie images out there, mine included, that are just like the simple overhead shot, maybe on parchment or a surface or maybe a baking tray, but that's kind of like about it, right? That I was like, there's gotta be some more interesting and fun ways to do that. So I really spent a lot of time going through some of my 
favorite cookbooks, favorite magazines, blogs, collecting images that I thought, oh, I really like what they did with those cookies. Oh, I like that strategy. So let's go ahead and talk now about how we can set up and put together our scenes to make it a little bit more exciting. So tip number six is, you know, we talked about, again, that overhead perspective is really great for cookies because all of the visual interest is on top of the cookie, right? But maybe we want to create a sense of depth. I really like the idea of layering the cookies, especially if we have a lot of cookies to work with, like you would have baking up sugar cookies in kind of like this holiday cookie extravaganza, is that creating layers so that there's a sense of depth there, that it's not just a single layer of cookies. So then number seven, one of the things that I really liked in a lot of cookie photos that I thought made them really interesting is incorporating some sort of unique pan or dish or box, even gift wrapping boxes, creating that sense of a container for the cookies is really fun. It also frames the cookies really nicely and it creates some really interesting shadows. So you can see that I pulled out here this baking tray that it's like a pan. It's got a certain amount of depth to it. I've been wanting to use this one forever. I've never shot with it. It sort of needed a perfect moment, but I love the greens just in terms of that red and green theme that we've got going on in this photo, as well as sort of that rusty sort of texture going on. It just is really lived in and well-worn, but stuck that parchment paper under because I was like, I don't wanna be eating off of this thing. Anyway, all that being said, look for opportunities of how can we put this in a box or create some sort of container around it to really play on the shadows and to play on the depth. So then number eight, and this is really about like before you get into the shooting process, thinking about props, what other props would go with cookies? Again, kind of going into that storytelling idea that some of my favorite cookie photos incorporate different props that are a nod to, you know, Santa's coming. So we've got the, you know, milk and cookies, or maybe we've just got like a couple little cookies on a plate. Or in this example, you can see that I've incorporated the spool of twine and the pine cone and the napkin and other things that may be around while we're having some cookies and wrapping gifts, right? So just thinking about what are some of those other peripheral items that can make the image a little more exciting and again, frame our subject to tell a bigger story. But of course, we gotta move away too from the overhead perspective. I mean, it's beautiful, it's perfect for cookies, absolutely go with it. However, if you wanna you know, push yourself, try something a little more challenging, this is something that definitely pushed me outside my comfort zone zone and made me think more creatively was forcing myself into the three quarter angle for the cookies. One thing that I noticed and some of the inspiration photos that I pulled again that are in that Pinterest gallery was the idea of isolating a single cookie and then having some around the periphery so that we're really kind of zeroing in on that one particular cookie but getting the sense of the larger scene but that that really worked for that three quarter angle. The thing to think about especially in approaching an image like this where I'm shooting this with a macro lens right so we can really like get that compression really zoom in and sync up on that singular cookie is to think about your depth of field and make sure you're selecting an aperture that gets enough of that cookie right because that plane of focus isn't directly parallel with the plane of the cookie and so I really I stopped this all the way down to f11 to get some real sense of like the full cookie while still getting sort of that softer kind of glowy background that I personally enjoy and then tip number 10 pushing us even further outside our composition comfort zone that, you know, absolutely, I highly believe in shooting these kind of cookies overhead, like all cookies to some degree overhead, because all the visual interest for the most part lives on the top of the cookie. However, if you want to push your skills, you want to think more creatively, force yourself to shoot at that head on angle. And that's what I did here with this Christmas tree. And I got the idea because I'd seen people, especially with like chocolate chip cookies, what they were doing is, you know, stacking like a stack of cookies and then resting one cookie up to the side. Now for these particular sugar cookies, that was, you know, there was definitely some challenges that came up. First and foremost, in terms of the lighting that I wanted to make sure that there was enough light sort of hitting that stack of cookies that we could see that texture and we could just see those cookies as well as then getting the appropriate amount of like light skimming off the front of that tree to really show off the texture of the frosting. So I ended up with kind of a three quarter back 
angle in terms of that lighting. But then because I was shooting on a white surface, it really helped to kind of bounce some fill light back into that stack of cookies. But then too, I really had to kind of play around with the combination of like, I knew I wanted the Christmas tree because I just thought that that was so representative of the Christmas holiday and you know, had a lot of visual interest. I liked this cookie in particular, but at first I had then done a stack of trees behind it. But because of the shape of the trees and the angle and everything, like it just kind of looked weird. I don't know, it just, it didn't work. It looked a little like flat. And so I thought, well, you know, let's maybe try out just a different stack of cookies. Let's go with a rounder cookie. So then that's when I went for the snowflakes bam, it fell right into place. So I was super happy with that. So sometimes, you know, just experimenting, trying different things out, you can see kind of some of my different attempts until I got to that composition that ultimately I was super happy with. So hopefully this has given you some fun, creative ideas to try your hand at some cookie decorating if you've never done that before. Or if you are an experienced cookie decorator or you shoot a lot of cookies, feel free to share in the comments down below some of your strategies and tips with us. I always love to learn more. Y'all have such great experience and such great expertise. So definitely share with everybody. But with that, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe. With that, you have a fantastic week. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.